Hello everyone. Uh, this is the second part of tutorial about gardening system. Unfortunately, I didn't mention uh, that my video recording was broken when I've recorded uh, this part. And uh, this time I will just describe an already done the mechanics how to do them. So, during this part, after this tutorial, we'll be able to select some seeds and move them to place them somewhere. I am not able to place them yet. So, let's start. And the first thing that we need to decide is uh, how planting will work. Because it may vary from project to project, uh, you may want to plant seeds from uh, some fast slots in the bottom, like in Valheim, when you have uh, seeds in uh, slot 1 or 2 and just select it and plant it. Or like in Medieval Dynasty or some or Scum, for example, when you have uh, uh, some seed bag, like in my case I have a pouch, and you want to seed them using an animation. I will do this mechanic using a seed bag. So let's start. And the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, display some seeds that you have in your inventory. So when you have in, uh, seeds in your inventory, you should be able to display them. And for this, we need some widget. So let's create. I've created a new widget. Called it seeds widget, and this is just a widget for one seed. This is a button with some text. Text is now empty. Text is variable. Also, button is also variable, and it's all placed in a size box. In my case, with width 150 and height 50. So this is how widget looks like, and in event graph. Uh, I, we need to know a name of a seed uh, to display. So in my case, it's uh, some item from inventory. In my case, it is structure called S item. So I have a variable called S item in this widget, and it's instance editable and exposed on spawn. Uh, then in preconstruct script, I'm breaking this item like here getting its name and setting its name to uh, to this text in a button that is empty right now. And uh, that's all about changing the name. Also, we need to handle click on this button somehow, so that's why we've created the button as variable. So here we can select it in variables list and uh, add an event on click. And here on clicked event will appear and we need to tell uh, an owner of the widget that uh, we clicked on some button with such item. So to do this we need an event dispatcher. It's created below the variables category and uh, I call it on seed selected and added an input. And input is uh, seed selected of type as item. And I'm just calling it like here, you can just drag it and select call. Calling and passing a seed. Now, that's all for a button of a seed, and we need to display it somewhere. I'm displaying it in my main hut widget. Uh, here, I, I'm gonna display it on the left side of, uh, of a screen. So, at first I've added a scroll, scroll box from here. Just moved it here somewhere, changed its size uh, to here it is to size X 200, size Y 400. It's uh, on your side, you may select any size you want and uh, edit an enter to the left uh, corner of a screen, no, not corner, left side of a screen. Then it uh, needs to have uh, a list of buttons, so I've added a red box. Here you can search for a rep box, and I've just edited it into scroll scroll box and made it fill. 
scroll uh, red box is something like table your collection you it's uh, some kind of uh, a list of an items different items so also we need to make a red box a variable i called it vb slash seeds and made uh, these VB seeds hidden by default. Here you can select the visibility and I made it hidden by default because I want to show it only when, for example, my seed bag is in my hands. Next, let's go into graph, to event graph, and nothing ch is changed here and here. I've added a few functions for this seeds widget. First is show seeds widget. This function have a, has an input of, with boolean, of boolean show and depending on this boolean I'm selecting whether I want to show this widget or not. So I'm setting a visibility of this widget. If show is true I'm just selecting by boolean. It's a select node here. Here is how it looks like. And if it is true then it is visible. If not it is hidden. And that's all. And also I need set up seeds widget. I need to set up it somehow. I need to create these buttons. So to do this, I have an inventory system. That's my system for an inventory. In your case, it may be another system, or maybe you store items in your inventory just like an array. In this case, you need to pass an array to your hot widget. In my case, I need to pass a system to my widget. How to do that? I've created an inventory system component variable here, made it instance editable and exposed on spawn. Here I am getting a content of my inventory and looping through every item in my inventory, breaking this item and also in my case I have created a variable called item type in my inventory. And I'm checking if its type is seeds. In your case you may want to check it by name. You may uh, check it by some ID or in any way how you want to define if this item is uh, your seed or not. And if it is a seed, then I'm creating a widget for seeds with buttons that I've created and passing my inventory item here so that it will be able to take a name of seed. After I've created this button, I'm binding on click event. Uh, this is how it's done. Just type in bind and select searching for example bind event on seed select like this and creating an event to do this we just move in from event node and type in create event and here we can select a uh, few types I have selected create a matching function it has created me a function uh, with some generic name which I have renamed to on seed select so this function will be called every time when on seed selected is called from button widget. And after that all, I'm getting my red box and adding this widget as a child. So red box, a child red box. And this is on seed selected. This is a function that I've created, that was created by create event. Next. Uh, we will go, we will uh, turn back here because it uses one more component. Next, we need to create a component for our seed bag. I've created a component. Uh, let me search for it. Pouch component. This is a component for my uh, pouch, or I don't know, maybe is a better equivalent. And uh, how to create a component? You can right click here, blueprint class, extra component, and just type in pouch, component, etc, etc, as you wish. So here is a pouch component. It has begin play and event tick by default. So in begin play, I'm getting an owner. This will be my character who owns this component, casting it to my character and promoting it to variable. And next, I need to be able to show. And that's all for begin play for now. Now, um, this component needs to know when I have equipped my pouch. So I've created two events called onEquip and onDeequip. And uh, 
And that's how it is done. Also, it depends on your system. In my case, I have an equipment component for equipping items. In your case, you may equip it somewhere else. It doesn't matter just when you equip a pouch. For example, in my equip component, when I equip a pouch, then I'm getting a character, getting its component by class and getting its pouch component and calling on equip. And the same for the equip. When I equip something, I'm checking if it was a pouch. Um, not here. Here, if it was a pouch and calling on the equip. So it depends on where your logic of equipment is implemented. That's all for equipment. And on equip, I need to show this widget. And on the equip, I need to hide this widget. So to do this, we need to access somehow VB main hat widget, this one. Uh, it's also the, it also depends on where uh, your user interface control is located. In my case, it's user interface component. So I will open it. User interface component. And here I have a, I created function show seat widget with flag show. And it gets my main hat widget, this one. It's a variable vb hat and first calls setup seeds widget which will create button for each seed and then I'm calling show seeds widget that will change the visibility of a widget and passing this show here and uh, here is logic that that is needed only in my case to show course or not show cursor here it is for user component so on equip, I'm getting this user interface component, and I've get, got it just calling the function get component by class from my character in begin play. I got component by class user interface component and promoted it to variable. So I'm getting it later here and calling shows it widget with flag true on equip and shows it widget with flag false on the equip, and that uh, gives us. Uh, I don't know, not an opportunity, a possibility uh, to show this widget as you can see here when the pouch equipped and hide it when it is de equipped, like this. Also, I see a bug uh, that uh, main hat widget in place where I uh, call uh, setup seat widget first, we need to clear web box before setting up. So let's get a web box seat before everything and call clear children. It will remove all previous buttons like this. And now it will work. We will not see a lot of buttons. Oh, I'm collecting seats, collecting pouch. And now you can see seats and uh, you can see widget. It's hidden, it's shown, scepter, scepter. So this is the logic for it. And now, what we need to do is we need to be able to select widget. We already created a function in main hat widget, and let's see what happens there. So on seed selected, we are getting here. I'm getting a pouch component and calling a function. But uh, how my main hat widget knows about pouch component? I've created a new variable like this, called it pouch component scepter scepter and the type was pouch component like this also i made it instance editable and expose on spawn i will delete it here because i have one and this gives us a uh, possibility to pass pouch component to main hat widget as parameter when we are creating main hat widget so next we should navigate to the place where we are creating main hat widget. In my case, it's user interface component. And here I have create main hat widget. A call a right click on it, a refresh node, so that uh, every pin uh, will be up to date. And you will see a new pin pouch component. So we need to provide our hat widget on creation, uh, in creation time with pouch component. 
So how are you gonna get it? I'm getting an owner of user interface component and getting component by class pouch component here and passing it here. So that's how main cat widget knows about pouch component. And next we need to call some function or event on pouch component. Tell pouch component that some seed was selected. So I've created a new event called on seed selected in pouch component and it has an input seed item of type as item. Uh, which tells us which seed was selected. And I'm just calling this function on seed selected from main cut widget. Okay, what needs to have what has to happen when uh, seed is selected? We need to spawn some actor. We need to spawn some for example if I select tomato seed I need to spawn some tomato plant if I select pumpkin uh, seeds, then I will need to spawn some other seed. And so we need some mapping. We need to know which seed is linked to which actor. So we need to be able to understand this. For this, uh, I've opened just garden component folder. For this, I've created a new structure called S plant. And what is as plant? As plant is a structure that will describe an, a plant by itself. So it will have a name, for example, tomato. It will have a growth speed, water consumption, and an actor. An actor class, not just an actor. As you can see, I have an actor class here. It will be an actor that will be spawned. Actor associated with this plant. Also, we need to associate this structure somehow with an inventory item, with a seed. So, I have a seed variable, a seed, uh, not a variable, seed field here, here, that is data table row handle. Uh, data table row handle is something like a uh, reference to some row in another data table. In my case, it is a reference uh, to a data table DT items items is a list of all all items that can be stored in inventory in your case it may be seed id if you want to check by id or seed name and etc but i've decided to do it like this so that is how structure looks like next i've created a uh, i've created an actor I've created a new actor called DP plant parent. It's just an actor here. Um, in my case, I already cha changed its parent to my parent called DP resource, but it doesn't matter. DP resource just gives me possibility to have these boxes and to interact with, with it without any changes. So, in your actor, you will need a static mesh. A static mesh that uh, will uh, be a plant mesh, for example, tomato, tomato, or something else. But this is a parent class, we will write all logic here, and now it will be just clear, it will be just an actor with one static mesh. Next, let's create, I've created a child actor from this BP plant parent. You can just cl right click on BP plant parent and create child blueprint class. I have created and called it DP tomato plant because the first seed uh, I will plant will be tomatoes. Okay, now the only difference with DP plant is uh, that its static mesh will be a tomato. Static mesh tomato, like this. So here is how it looks like. Move it a little bit. I'll just move in my interaction box and uh, location of from which interaction line goes. So, and now in structure here, an actor class, I'm not having just an actor class reference, I'm having a BP, BP plant parent. BP and parent and class reference so that we will know that it is a plant not just an actor for example character it will always be some child of bp plant 
that's all for this structure. And uh, now we need to have a list of uh, all possible mappings. So I created a new data table called DT plants, which will have all the list of all the plants that can be planted in their, our game. By default, it is empty. I'm clicking add new row. Call it, for example, the next will be bit. I'm adding it a name as bit. Uh, here on seed, I'm selecting my data table. Uh, DT items and selecting row name. Here I need to select a seed. For example, now it is um, uh, I have only tomato seed, so for bit I will select nothing. But for tomato, I have selected here tomato seed. And uh, growth speed uh, just zero one. Uh, water consumption zero one. By default, uh, it doesn't matter for now. And uh, the main thing is actor. Actors that will be spawned, and it is the pit tomato plant. So after this row is created, we're finished with DT plants. Next, let's go back to pouch component. Now, when we have a seeds item, we need to find uh, this row from uh, DT plants. We need to find which row is mapped with this seed that we received. Whether it's beet or whether it's tomato or whether it's something else. So, what I'm doing, I'm get, getting all data table row names, just a function, data table row names. Selecting data table, this one, DT plants. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look through every row here and find first where this seed is the same as this seed that we here. So that's how it looks like. So I'm getting all row names and looking through each row name. For each row name I'm getting a data table row. I'm getting a row so because row names will return me tomatoes, beet and a list of strings. It will return me a list of strings and now I'm getting first row this one. So I'm getting a row for each name. First, it will get a tomato row, it will, uh, and uh, it will return us a structure. It will return us a structure, this one structure, that is S plant structure. Next, I'm breaking it. Here, I'm breaking S plant structure, and from, the, from this structure, I need to get a seed. I need to get a seed to check if it is equal to this seed. So, I'm getting the seed. Seed is my data table row handle. I'm breaking it. Checking if uh, uh, checking and the data table row handle contains data table and row name. So I'm breaking uh, uh, in in my case for tomato it will have data items and row name will be tomato seeds. So I'm getting this data table and getting uh, an item with a row name tomato seeds and breaking a result as item. So that's how we uh, got from DT plants an S item, an inventory item that uh, is mapped with uh, this row. And so all I need to do is check if name of this inventory item is the same as a name of this S item. So I'm getting a name of a seed item here. I will just hide and connect it pins and checking if it is equal exactly with this name and if it is equal then i'm spawning an actor i'm spawning an actor and which actor i'm gonna spawn is uh, as you remember in dt plants we have an actor field with a class and i'm just connecting this actor of this seed with this actor class so it will spawn us bp tomato plant for example for tomato it is spawned. I'm promoting it to a rival. This plant, call it plant actor of type BP plant parent. And after that, I'm breaking from a loop because we don't need to check it anymore. Okay. And at this moment, it will spawn at location 000 and so on, but and we will not see it. 
and as you may see in the start of the video I was able to move it and preview it so I need to make some traces so I created a function called make movement trace make movement trace in pouch component and what it does it gets my camera location in your case if you have a camera on your character for example if you have uh, I don't remember camera boom it's called no camera okay if you have a camera and uh, I don't know this uh, camera stick spring arm if you have sound a camera system like this with camera and spring arm uh, then it's very simple for you you're just getting a character and the following camera for example get get camera and then get uh, get world location of your camera in my case uh, my camera is not here it's uh, a separate camera manager so I'm getting player controller get camera manager getting its transform and after this I'm getting a world location of my camera and it will be a start location of a line trace so I'm creating a line trace here I'm creating a, uh, it will be a start and the end will be a direction where we look with distance so I'm getting a forward vector of my camera so it shows us where we are looking I'm multiplying it on some values this some value is a distance on which uh, we're gonna look because forward vector x, y, and z will be from zero or minus one to one or from zero to one, and then multiply it by distance on which I'm gonna make a line trace. For example, on, I will decrease it a little bit. For example, one one thousand five hundred. Adding it to camera location, and this goes into the end location. Next thing that we need to do is we need to decide on which channel we're going to trace. So I'm tracing, as you can see, on building channel. But by default, what do we need? We need uh, our channel, our line trace, to be blocked only by a landscape. It should not be blocked by tree, by stone, by a bush, by something else, by table. We need our trace channel to be blocked only by a landscape because we can plant seeds on, uh, on table, for example. So, I went to project settings, uh, collision category, and here you can create a new trace channel. Just clicking here, uh, for example, landscape channel, and default response will be ignored. So, everything will ignore this channel. In my case, I already have a building channel. I already have a building channel, and uh, only landscape I you can select the landscape and set it to and here you will have a new trace response like in my case building channel and set it to block and everything else except landscape will ignore this channel so on the landscape we'll be able to block this channel so now we can guarantee that we hitting only if we hit something we are hitting a landscape and only a landscape so Trace channel and select trace channel here. If you don't see it here, right click here, refresh nodes, and you will see it. Next, I'm checking if it was a hit. So I'm adding a branch. And if it was a hit, I'm getting this plant actor and setting its location. Oops. Set actor location. And location will be out hit, break. I'm breaking hit to result and getting a location of a hit. So this will be a new location of an actor. Now we need to call this function somewhere. I'm calling this in event tick, but I don't want it to be called every time. I'm calling this only if I have a plant actor into this valley. So you can get plant actor here, right click on it and convert to validate get. So if it is valid, if we have selected some plant, then we are making a movement trace. This we are calling this function. And it will move a uh, plant. Uh, And it will move a plant like like this, so you will be able to move it. 
and the only thing that we need to do is uh, to colorize it make it look like a template not uh, now it will look like let me let me let me remove this node for example and from this part it will look like a basic basic tomato node will look like this you will have just a basic tomato and so on so we need to be able to preview it to change its material so I will just bring it back okay let's move back to our place where we created tomato plant this is blueprint and create a new material right click here material open it up select uh, material attributes here and on the left side material domain size surface by blend mode it is going to be an additive or translucent if you want to choose uh, as you wish so i select an additive sets its opacity like this to constant 0 6 and color is just constant 3 vector and uh, i will just select the color of green color that's all for this material and uh, next I've opened not a BP tomato plant but BP plant parent because it is and created a new function called start previewing because I need this function to be available for every plant and I want to create it only once so now I have a function start previewing BP in BP plant parent in my case, I'm disabling collision for interaction box so as it will not see a line with F button. And next, I'm getting a static mesh from here, getting all its materials and promoting it to variable base materials, like this. So that we will save a base material of our tomato. I'm not sure that we need it, but let it be here. Then for each of these materials, I am looping and getting static mesh and setting material. For each of them, I'm calling a function set material from static mesh. Set material, uh, here it is, and it needs an index of material. Why I'm doing this? Because different static meshes, for example, tomato, uh, it has three materials. Some other some other plants may have four materials, one material, and etc. etc. And we don't know how much materials every plant has, so I'm uh, just uh, checking and how much materials current static mesh has. And for each of them, I'm changing material to M plant preview, the one the materials that we've just created. So that's all for this function. And now in pouch component. After I have spawned this actor, I am just calling a function called start preview. After that, I promoted it to variable, and uh, and that's it, and that's all. That's all I've done. And after that, you can see how it looks. So now it is green. You can move it somewhere. There is no validation yet, and as you can see, I'm moving on table, but it's aligned to a landscape, not to a table. I'm tracing to to a tree, and uh, everything works fine, like this. So, not stones, no branches that are breaking this movement. So. That's all for this video. I'm sorry that I forgot to record it correctly and has to tell what to do like this. Thanks for watching. Hope it will help someone. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.